The number of people fleeing war, persecution and conflict, as we just saw there in Syria, has exceeded 70 million globally. It's the biggest humanitarian crisis since World War II and a figure that's quite hard to comprehend. Well, filmmaker Deborah Kellner spent almost three years following the journeys of three families forced to flee war-torn Syria and Afghanistan. As they search for somewhere to call home, her documentary is called Inside My Heart and Deborah joins me now. Deborah, good to have you with us. It's an incredibly moving film. We can take a look first at part of the trailer just to get a flavour of it. Great. Take a look at that now. اعطيتك بقلبي وخبيتك كله قول ما يروحي حبيبي That was a clip from the documentary Inside My Heart. Incredibly poignant there. You have the father and son looking out to Europe, so close but so out of their reach. And you have is it Zara saying Europe's just an illusion. They had high hopes when they fled, didn't they, that Europe, this, this land of democracy, would welcome them and protect them? Well, uh, at the time, so the, 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 the film really essentially started in October of 2015. So I had a call from a friend, uh, Frank Juster, who was with his uh, foundation in Canada, said, let's go to meet in Lesvos and see if we can put some footage together, raise some money and help with the crisis. And so basically I was there uh, on the beaches of Lesvos, uh, off, off helping offload refugees the same night that we had the Paris attacks. Mm. So, you know, I remember getting back to the, you know, back to the hotel at night with my crew. And, and uh, you know, it was just about, you know, we were two hours out of the attacks happening. And I remember waking up in the night and just thinking, this, this is, it's coming to us. And I just remember, you know, the look and tear uh, on the faces of, you know, women and children. You know, they're, they're, you know, you have to consider that the Syrian crisis was going on already several, several years before, you know, this point in time, before the famous uh, uh, photo of the little boy on the beach. So I just remember thinking, you know, what can I do as a single mom to, you know, m make a difference? And we started by putting together small films and uh, that were, you know, used for the International Rescue Committee. And little by little, you know, trips back and forth to Lesbos and in, elsewhere in Greece, we started to meet people. Uh, I met on that trip the two little girls. And I remember saying to my cameraman at the time, after we did the first interview in this camp, these two little girls who were seven, who we see in the film, I remember waking up the night and just thinking, my God, those, those little girls are incredible. And well, you know, I, I remember waking up in the morning thinking, we have to go back to those little girls. They're, 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 I don't know how to explain this, but we just have to go back. We went back. And so for the coming days that were there and after the attacks that had happened, they, you know, they were asking me, where should we go? Where should we go? And I said, well, go north. Go as far north as you can. And uh, I gave them my email, and then throughout, you know, throughout their, their journey, you know, when I made it back to Paris, I started getting pictures of them move across Europe until they finally reached Sweden. And they wrote me in Sweden, and, and they, the little girls, seven years of age, they wrote me and said, come to Sweden. And so this is how the mm. film started. Because I was going to ask you how easy or difficult it was to build up the trust there. But there, that was an invitation to go and film them. But you follow three different families on their journeys. They're on the move. How, how difficult was it to keep track of them as well? Uh, well, the, the brilliant thing about uh, the technology is that uh, all of them have smartphones. So you, you have to think that this is probably, you know, this is their lifeline. You know, I, I think that's really important to say that, you know, most families that, you know, that showed up in Europe, 
you know, they, they took this as a, they took these decisions, you know, of leaving their homes as the last choice. You know, they had no other choice but to leave. So you have to think about how incredibly, you, two of my families came from Aleppo and, you know, we've all seen what happened to Aleppo. And then the little girls came from Afghanistan. So, you know, by the time they were in Europe, um, you know, and I was making trips back and forth, you know, helping the foundation, um, you know, create content so, uh, you know, so that we could raise, you know, funds. And, you know, I, th I think that at one point, and, and I think also being a female f filmmaker, you know, working uh, with, you know, uh, especially Muslim women, I think that, you know, it was very in for the children also. Uh, I think it was very, you know, easy to just be, you know, just to be there. And, and in some cases, sometimes a relief, you know, because, you know, often, often cases what they need more than anything when, you know, you're in distress is someone to listen to you. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, and I think that's sort of how the film grew in a very organic way. The idea was just to be there in a moment with a very, very small crew and to, um, I see them down. Yeah. yeah, so gorgeous, yeah. those little girls. Yeah. And, um, you know, so often we hear these huge statistics of refugees and migrants. We can't really comprehend them. What you've done in your film is with these three families is you've given them a face, humanity. What kind of response have you had to your film and what do you hope that people watching it walk away feeling and doing? Well, one of the big things, uh, you know, seeing, uh, you know, probably like everybody, you know, when the crisis was, you know, the heart of the crisis, you know, we saw these boat boats uh, full of people you know getting off and we just saw this big mass coming towards us at least in Europe and throughout the world and uh, you know what I wanted to do was I wanted to give it a human face and I wanted people to be able to see them as you know as mothers as fathers as children and something that essentially we could all identify with and I, I, I have to say the film grew in this very organic way. It was a very small uh, film with a big heart. I'm going to interrupt you quickly because we haven't got much time left. And I do want to know what's happened to the families. Very briefly, what's happened to the families since you finished filming? So uh, the, uh, Mohammed and his family are still in Turkey. Mohammed had a terrible accident because he was working a job. Uh, he lost part of his right hand. And uh, Zara is in Lisbon. She went back to Lisbon uh, and she is uh, with her children and they're all in school in Lisbon. Mm. And the family in Sweden managed to get their status after a long, hard fight. Aww. And we're going to be meeting in Stockholm next month. Oh, wonderful. To, uh, with the Canadian Embassy again uh, and uh, a group of parliamentarians to discuss policy. how that goes, Deborah. So, wonderful yes. to have you here and congratulations yeah. on the film. Thank you very much. Thank you.